Welcome to German history with a German accent. My name is still Wolf, W-O-L-F, just like the animal. And in today's video, I'd like to speak a little bit about the hijacking of the German Lufthansa airplane with the name Landshut. As always, if you enjoy these videos, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and don't forget to drop me a comment below. On October 13th, 1977, four Palestine terrorists members of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, stormed the cockpit of the Lufthansa airplane while traveling from Mallorca back to Frankfurt am Main. This event was part of the so-called German Autumn, where the Federal Republic of Germany was under massive pressure from left extremist terrorism, mainly the Red Army Fraction, the RAF. Only one month earlier, one of their commands had kidnapped Hans Martin Schleyer, who was the president of the Confederation of German Employers. They also killed his driver as well as three escorting police officers. The goal of this kidnapping was to blackmail the West German government to release 11 members of the first generation of the Red Army Fraction. But the government of the Federal Republic of Germany under Chancellor Helmut Schmidt, stayed hard and did not release prisoners. Schmidt, by the way, even went further and left instructions not to negotiate with terrorists even if himself and or his wife would have been kidnapped. In an effort to support the Red Army Fraction, the four Palestine terrorists, two men and two women, took over the plane and made the pilot, 37-year-old Jürgen Schumann, change the course towards Lanaka, which is located on the Greek part of Cyprus. But due to a lack of fuel, the airplane had to, la to land and, re and refuel in the Italian capital of Rome. While being in Rome, the leader of the terrorist group announced their demands, which included the release of the 11 terrorists in German prisons, two terrorists held in a prison in Turkey, as well as 15 million US dollars. It was there that the West German government backed Italian officials to block the airplane from taking off. They even suggested the idea of shooting their tires. Yet the Italian authorities did not follow this request and let the Landshut leave Rome and fly towards Cyprus. While being on the island in the Mediterranean Sea, A member of the Palestine Liberation Organization tried, tried to persuade the terrorists to give up, but the terrorists on board the airplane just angrily shouted and refused. After being refueled once more, the Landshut left and headed for Beirut, but was denied landing permission. Further, the plane was denied landing at Damascus, Baghdad, and Kuwait. Instead, the hijacked airplane continued its journey towards Dubai. Despite also being denied landing permission initially, the local authorities removed vehicles from the runway after the Landshut conducted a low-altitude flyover the airport. While being on the runway of the airport, the situation aboard worsened. The toilets were in miserable shape, the AC kept failing, and the temperatures in the airplane rose to about 50 degrees Celsius or 122 Fahrenheit. Also during this stop, Captain Jürgen Schumann was able to secretly provide information about the hijackers, which was broadcasted in an interview that the terrorists themselves heard too. Enraged, they pointed a gun at the pilot and made him kneel down in the middle of the airplane and threatened to kill him if he did anything similar again. The airport officials in Dubai initially refused to fill up the Landshut with kerosene. But when the terrorists pulled up a hostage to the open door of the plane and threatened to shoot her in the head, they gave in and refueled. From Dubai, the Lufthansa machine headed towards Aden in South Yemen with the hope to finally find a government supporting their actions. But like all other prior countries, South Yemen initially denied permission to land the aircraft. Although, again, super low on fuel, Aden did not back down from its decision 
and both runways remained blocked by military vehicles. Running on fumes, the pilots made an attempt to land the Landshut next to the paved runway and the aircraft made it down safely, but both Schumann and his co-pilot Jürgen Vitor are convinced that it is unsafe to take off from Aden due to lots of sand and debris in the engines as well as the strain on the landing gear. The Palestine terrorists permitted Captain Jürgen Schumann to leave the aircraft to check for damages. While being outside, he talked with officials in the tower of the airport and tried to convince them to deny a takeoff. During his hour-long absence, he was called for numerous times by the crew. Extremely enraged, the head of the hijackers shot Jürgen Schumann upon his voluntary return to the Landshut in the middle amongst other crew members and passengers. With his corpse aboard, the German aircraft had to take off of Aden. The next stop on their way would become the Somalian capital, Mogadishu. On the runway of the airport, the Palestine terrorists gave the West German government an ultimatum. If the imprisoned Red Army Fraction members wouldn't be released by 3 p.m. of October 17th, the hijackers would blow the airplane apart and subsequently kill all hostages. In an attempt to save her life and the life of all the other hostages, stewardess Gabriela Dillmann radioed the tower and stated that they would all die if the responsible government officials wouldn't act. To extend the ultimatum, the Federal Republic of Germany pretended to accept the terrorist terms, but in reality this extension was used to fly in the German SWAT unit, GSG-9, which was the best trained German police unit there is. Said unit followed the hijacked airplane since Cyprus. The president of Somalia permitted this German police operation on its soil based on the promises of future weapon deliveries, cash, and officially it was also a joint operation with their authorities. On October 18th, Five minutes past midnight, the GSG-9, under the command of Ulrich Wegener, stormed the aircraft. How exactly the police stormed the airplane had not been published, since the unit, according to first-hand accounts, still uses the same tactics. This operation, codenamed Feuerzauber, ended with three of the terrorists dead, one wounded. One German GSG-9 member was also wounded, as well as four hostages but there were no casualties. Helmut Schmidt, Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany, was prepared to step down as Chancellor if that operation had failed. The news of the successful liberation of the hostages led to the so-called Death Night in Stammheim, where Andreas Bader, Jan Karl Rasper and Gundrun Elsen committed suicides in their prison cells. This also led to the execution of the Red Army Fraction hostage, Hans-Martin Schleyer. Thank you so much for watching this video.